Well, I'm looking at this picture which I painted probably 35 to 40 years ago. And I'm fascinated by the bow wave. I think I got that really well done. I, I really like it, the way the foam is breaking up and coming down. And Because obviously I look at ships a huge amount of time and I've got it absolutely right. This big bulbous bow going into the water and then all the little vents like that. And of course, about that time, one of my first commissions was painting nuclear submarines for the Royal Navy. And I went up to Faz Lane and they took me all over a nuclear submarine. So this does bring back memories. So I think for the pencil work, it would be quite fun to have maybe the conning tower of a big modern submarine and of course to my surprise when I went up to Faz Lane and looked at this nuclear sub the whole conning tower there's a name for it and I can't remember what it's called oh the sail it's called the sail the sail is completely empty it's just full of girders to strengthen it and in that case of that submarine lots of barnacles and seaweed i don't know if they were going to clean it out or, or what but uh, and then of course i'm going to have a bit of fun i like to put a gun on the back and things like this because i'm fascinated by naval ships i've just bought the most amazing book which is about the dreadnoughts which really were innovative things as I suppose nuclear submarines were and the p things for me which fascinate me are the positioning of the guns and things and so even as I think about it I'm going to put a great big deck gun on on this ship you know and uh, so there you are this is almost like the gun off a dreadnought like that and I've always been fascinated by the shape of the turrets they get larger at the back and I'm not quite sure what the reason for that is whether it's to make the shells bounce off or it's the ergonomics of inside or what and again I like the way ships are cut away so you get bits of deck which are much lower than other bits so this is the um deck on it and in fact the more, I don't think it's a submarine actually I think it's some sort of a ship because here it is look and the dreadnoughts used to have a very low um, deck structure the decks were actually quite low quite near the sea so we'll put some people on it because again I liked in the photographs of the dreadnoughts you can see these little figures running up and down and it sort of gives it a bit of scale and then it's more a submarine front at the front, I think. And then, you know, you get little bumps and nobbles and I don't know. Yeah, so look, you've got this sort of bow where obviously there's something a lot going on underneath the water. So this is this is the bow. I don't think I can do bow waves as well as I used to. So this is the bow just sort of plowing up the water a bit as it goes along. I would love, if it was a dreadnought, it would have a great plume of black smoke, but this is supposed to be a bit futuristic. So, uh, and of course the dreadnoughts were still coal burning. You know, the Navy ships did convert to oil. I think it was, rumour has it, it was Winston Churchill who, who as the sea, you know, as, as the minister um, brought in oil fired ships and that's why we have BP and everything because obviously they needed to get their oil so the Brits were out in what's probably now Iraq and places like that getting the oil and uh, so there we are so look it does seem to have a, a bow turret as well of some sort because I'm fascinated by modern warships which just seem to have one little pea shooter gun and I'm told that of course they don't really need the guns because they've all got missiles and god knows what well I'm saying they're so fragile you know the the, the hulls and they're literally made out of pinch thin aluminium if you got yourself a nice strong old-fashioned pirate gunboat it could knock the shit out of one of these things if it could get close enough so if with modern technology they were able to disable the electronics and there's your big posh all singing all dancing navy ship with all its electronics wiped down or hacked into along can come quite literally a Mickey Mouse gunboat and pump good old-fashioned howitzer shells into it and of course the superstructure is so weak and probably they have got a, a certain number of um, 
of, of shells, the whole thing will just blow up and go down. So there you go. You never know what can happen next in technology. So there it is. It's a sort of submarine stroke dreadnought. Maybe it can submerge. Maybe that's that would be an idea. You know, if you had, technically it's a warship, but to escape detection, it can submerge. And then, of course, um, that's another thing. Apparently, with mines now, you can program them with the footprint of like a large ship, like an aircraft carrier, a particular one, and that mine will only go off if something with that footprint goes over it. And again, reading my books, gigantic battleships that were all sunk by mines. So a mine is a very cheap and effective form of um, defence, really. There, that's some sort of an islet. And then that's the horizon over there. There's that. And then here we go. We do a bit of land over here, like this, and a bit more land there. And then maybe it has an escort. So it would be, by then, they would have got semi-spaceships. They would have got drone-type, sophisticated drone-type planes or, or spaceships. But maybe they use vertical jets, whatever, just to accompany the ship. So we'll, here we are, we'll just put in a bit of um, vapour coming down and that can go along and obviously scout ahead. And there's another one over here like this. And they just, uh, they obviously, they are the eyes of the ship because again, with the dreadnoughts, they had these incredible um, structures, which was the gun sight platform. And you needed those to be away from all the smoke because when those ships fired guns, there was smoke everywhere. Well, there we are, there's that one. There. Yeah.